Hey guys, what's up? It's Shinobi Ranger here, and welcome back to our first playthrough of our Age of Empires 4 campaign playthrough. And here we go, boys. Let's go. Get on with it. Let's go to single player. All right. So we are playing the campaigns. Uh, we should proceed in order. Wait a minute. First two. Okay. All right. So you know what? Let's start mess this up. Uh, I'm going to be playing this. On intermediate difficulty, not easy difficulty. Uh, so we shall go campaign by campaign. And first campaign we are playing is of the Normans, starting at 1066 at the Battle of Hastings and ending in 1217. Uh, that is 151 years at Lincoln. Okay. Uh, there is skirmish option and art of war. You know what? Really not interested. I want to just get on with the game, man. Okay. So here we go. The first mission of the first campaign. The Normans, the Battle of Hastings, 1066. In 1066, William of Normandy set out to wrest the kingdom of England from his Anglo-Saxon rival. Only one man could be king. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh. this is beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Some events leave a deep mark on history, but none on the land. Yep, Senlac Hill, the site of the this Battle of Hastings. The site of the Battle of Hastings. After almost a thousand years, no traces of the bloody conflict can be seen. But here, the fate of England turned. It's where a king was killed, and his victor claimed the throne. King being killed refers to Harald Godwinson. October 14th, 1066. We know what happened here on this day, thanks to this. The Bayer Tapestry? The Bayer Tapestry. Yep. A carefully preserved illustrated record of events. It shows the main players. Harold, the newly crowned Anglo-Saxon King of England, and his challenger, William. Duke of Normandy. William claimed the previous king had promised him the crown. So, he assembled an army and prepared to sail to England to fight King Harold for the throne. But a storm thwarted his plans. Meanwhile, Harold discovered that a Viking invasion had landed in the north another threat to his crown, so he raced to fight them. In France, William waited for the right conditions to sail across the Channel to England. The weather cleared. He seized his chance. Two hundred and fifty miles north, Harold had defeated the Vikings. Now, hearing of William's arrival, his army sped south. At nine o'clock in the morning, on this hill, William's Norman army were ready to do battle with Harold's Anglo-Saxon men. The stage was set, and up for grabs, England itself. Okay. Uh, Alright, William of Normandy began his conquest of England, but to end the Anglo Saxon rule, he would first have to kill the king. Alright. So this thing is going to load, and I guess it's going to start right away. Uh, maybe. Okay. But <coughs> why Hastings exactly is the question. So Hastings is, that is, Sedlak Hill, the road which William had to take north towards London passed through Sedlak Hill. And Harold locked him exactly at that point. Okay, all right. So I can explain. All right. The reason why Harold Godwinson chose Senlac Hill was because the Anglo-Saxon army lacked cavalry. This 
may not seem like a big deal but in fact it is quite a big deal all right now remember after the romans left britain around ad 410 the saxons landed on england and occupied england all right and in the 8th and 9th centuries ad the great northern army the great heathen army of the vikings also invaded england and uh, took up portions of england by dividing the country into viking held lands and anglo saxon held lands now both anglo saxons and the vikings had one major deficit that was cavalry they lacked cavalry because the home terrain i mean i'm sorry not home terrain the homelands from where the saxons and the vikings came from that is scandinavia for the vikings and uh, somewhere in the northern parts of europe horses were few whatever horses were present had to be used as draft animals or local transport okay the mountainous terrain did not help support horses and rearing of horses all right you could not afford to feed horses and maintain them there in vast numbers okay due to lack of funds because not all uh, the, the reason the vikings and uh, uh, saxons left their home lands and wandered around explored around was lack of fodder food and living space okay so to deal with these cavalry men who obviously if these cavalry men get a charge in they're going to rout your forces they're going to slaughter your men okay <coughs> being at the receiving end of a cavalry charge is not a pleasant business that is for sure so the vikings and the anglo saxons fought primarily in the inf- with infantry men in the shield wall formation okay so how the shield wall works is the left arm of the soldier is used to use a shield so the usually if you are a right handed swordsman if you are a right handed swordsman you would have your left hand using the shield and your right hand is used with the weapon so this is the right arm is where you do your work you do the business work on the battlefield so end to end if you lock your shields together you form something called as a shield wall wherein it is something like a hoplite phalanx where your uh, shield is locked in with another person shield so the right part let us say from the left the left person's shield a part of the right half of his shield helps cover the left part of this guy next to him so if you have two people side to side your shields would be overlapping and as long as the people behind you and your braced standing firm you cannot break such a charge all right you cannot you cannot easily break that shield wall because it is very cohesive and when on the defense it is going to be quite sturdy you can, and also you can easily um, adapt against archer fire so you can have the first few ranks form shields at the front and you can have the rear ranks hold their shields up high to pre- to ward off arrows now the reason senlac hill was chosen was it is a hill all right you need to move up the slope and attack them on the top of the hill is the presence of the saxon army under harald godwinson the flanks are covered with forests forest Terrain, wooded terrain, woody terrain, where cavalry cannot go through. You cannot uh, get your cavalry through, and you cannot get out, up the hill and then charge out. Because you need space to maneuver and deploy your cavalry. So here is Harold Godwinson's army on the top of the hill, looking down on Duke William's army, forming in sh- shield wall formation, st- uh, formed up with shield wall, and the only way William could go through was. he had to go straight on ahead defeat them and then proceed ahead okay it was an ideal battle ground for the anglo saxons but one thing they did was they lacked cavalry and they lacked archers <coughs> because in anglo saxon and viking culture um archers are found upon i wouldn't say like uh, they're completely dismissed they're not given as much prevalence I mean, if you see most of the TV series, you see Vikings and Anglo Saxon these um, hardy warriors going head to head in melee. They you go in hand to hand, face to face, and you fight and destroy your enemies. All right. And also, one major thing to consider was King Harald's 
personal bodyguards, the Huskarls. You can call them the Huskarls or the Huskarls. So these uh, are elite bodyguards. You could say they are elite retinues of troops who are loyal to the king. They are directly under the king's service. So that was an elite regiment present in the battlefield who are the last to fall. All right. So these Huskarls uh, wore the sh wore shields on the back, kite shields or round shields. Uh, that depends because. I do not know, know the kind of shield. Primarily, cavalrymen used kite shields. And the Huskals wielded the Danish Great Axe. That is a 200 axe. You need to be a very strong and hefty person and e enormously skilled person to wield that huge thing. It is almost 6 feet high and a huge blade. The blade itself, what, uh, the cutting edge could go up to nearly 1, 1.5 feet almost. A huge blade, okay, and if you swing that huge axe at anybody, well, God bless them. I mean, uh, how horrible is it going to be? You could cleave a soldier's arm off, or you could literally cut down a horse. You can slash and hack a horse in two pieces, right? So, what did William do is what we're going to see and what we're going to play, right? And it was a long and bloody fight. Let me tell you that it was a very long fight and a bloody fight. Okay, enough history talk. Let's get on with the game. Ah, look here we go. See, look at the formations. There are fourteen yeah. ten sixty six. William of Normandy stood ready for battle at the base of a hill. The high ground belonged to King Harold of England and his Anglo-Saxon army. Here, on this hilltop, the fate of England would be decided. Okay. Ay, 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 don't do that. Don't go, don't go, dear William. The Norman army made the first charge, launching a direct assault on the shield wall. Yeah. Though William's the army thing. fought fiercely against the shield wall, it would not yield. As one man fell, another took his place. Overlapping shields in tight formation made for a near impenetrable barrier. Yeah, you see? Almost. Realizing his army could not break the shield wall, William called for a retreat. Alright, get back. Get back, get back. Let those idiots break formation. was working. The Anglo-Saxon army broke their shield wall formation, leaving gaps for William to make a move. Super. Now, let's flank them. Go. Go. Oh, pull down the net. Alright, let's flank them. Start flanking them. You will not go there. You be here. You three go here. No longer in shield wall formation. Go there. William could pick them off as they charged. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, here we go. We are doing some damage. Oh uh, no 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 no! You are not going to get dead. Come back. Get close. Go. Get back. Go support the flank. Oh no, you don't. The All right, archers. Deployed rows of spearmen to push back the invaders. You don't worry about them. William we'll deal with them. Is sharp-eyed archers. Yeah, lose bodies and kill them all. Spearmen don't matter. I have a reserve of infantry with me just in case. More yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Arms reinforced William's army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I don't need the reinforcements though. Oh, I do. I'm sorry. Forget. Forget I said that. Come on, reinforce. All right. I need to reinforce them there. Let's get you, William. In. Oh, his cooldown is not done. Uh, all right, but wait. All right, swordsmen, advance on the flanks. Scattered fighting won't help. Open fire. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever, attack move, attack move. 
Alright, you don't need to go and reinforce there. Let's give a rally cry. There we go. What does this do? Increases the attack speed. Okay. Ooh, oh, shit. I have to be careful. Right well, side. Left flank. Anglo Saxon archers joined the fray. And the Normans' deadly cavalry ready to charge. Hola! Superb! But first, William's forces had to eliminate the enemy spearmen, whose sturdy pole arms could easily bring down a horse. Yeah. Help. Help them. Oh. Yes, yeah, shredding our spearmen. I'm sorry, our men at arms. Advance. <laughs> Protect the archers. Protect the archers. Oh shit. Flank them, flank them, flank them. Quick, quick, quick. Hold them, hold them. Oh, they're gunning our archers down. Shit, fall back, fall back, fall back, retreat. Alright, now let's see you play. Additional Norman archers joined the battle. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. How many more spearmen do they have, man? Uh, okay. Alright, cavalry, charge! From the field. William's cavalry was free to charge at the end. Charge! Write them down! Where is Duke? William, come on. Go, 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 go. Use your bonus. Infantry attack. Quick, flank them. Advance. Oh, down, down. Go, 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 go. Did I use up all my troops already? The Anglo Saxon army was in disarray. Their shield wall had been neutralized and their numbers were dwindling. Now, where is the standing between William and Victory was King Harold himself. Yeah, yeah, un secondo. That's his shit. The last of Harold's men encircled their king, prepared to lay down their lives. Uh oh, ain't good, not good, not good. Gun them down, gun them down quickly. It's cavalry, I need cavalry, I need man, quick, quick. Help. More Norman cavalrymen took to the field. Oh, what time? Where is the Duke? Kill him. Thank you. I don't need reinforcements, but I appreciate them. Oh, here we go. We win. We win. The Anglo-Saxon King Harold had fallen. Finally. In the confusion, some loyal soldiers fought to the death, while others scattered in panic. It wasn't such an easy victory, my dear. That is for sure. It was a long, hard-fought battle, and we win. Yeah. Leaderless and defeated, the last of the Anglo-Saxon army fled for their lives. Not the Huskars, though. The Huskars fought to the last man. The Normans celebrated victory over the English king. But William's quest to rule England was just beginning. Oh, yeah, we win. Oh, that was amazing. Hmm, alright. We watch this, right? Yes. Uh... At Guédelon in France, to understand how castles were constructed, they're building one from scratch, using just the tools and materials of the medieval age. 
It's a 25-year project. Whoa. The world's biggest archaeological experiment. Oh my god, really? 25 years? Well, that makes sense. The most important defensive feature of any castle was the wall surrounding it. Castle walls had to be incredibly thick in order to resist attack and absorb the impact of projectiles fired from trebuchets. Oh yeah, that's true. The curtain wall was over 20 feet deep, interspersed with towers. In earlier Norman castles, they were square. But while on crusade, European knights saw that eastern towers were round. They realized that eliminating corners not only made them stronger, but also provided a better view of the surrounding landscape. Yeah, that's true. That's correct. Absolutely right. Completing the walls will take some 30,000 tons of sandstone. 30,000 tons of sandstone, oh my God. Transport the Middle Ages were incredibly expensive. So having a good supply of local stone close to the castle was vital. To extract it from the quarry, First, a row of holes is hand drilled. Yeah, you pour water, right? Once all the holes are ready, I'm ready to oh, okay, the right. wedges. And I'm ready to split it open by hitting very hard on each wedge with a big sledgehammer. Oh, the stone man, is split into usable blocks. Then transported using horsepower and human effort. Oh, look at that beautiful this crane. Wheel crane can lift up to half a ton. Wow. The walls are built like sandwiches. On the outside, you have facing walls built from better quality stones. And the inside, the rubble cores, they're built with softer stones and other offcuts from the quarry. And they're built up in layers with a very thick, coarse mortar. This ingenious method makes the walls better able to withstand hits from a trebuchet. Oh, oh my God, is sweet. Ooh, that is beautiful. Sandstone is too hard to be carved into intricate windows, vaults, and steps. Instead, softer, more expensive limestone is used. These sophisticated building techniques make castles the ultimate feats of medieval engineering. It's a testament to their construction that so many still stand today. Wow, that was fun. Uh, we watched this one. Okay, Nova Stella. Okay, let's read this. Nova Stella, Novus Rex. In April 1066, a bright star with long streaked tail appeared in the night sky and burned for weeks. Its appearance coincided with the imminent, <coughs> with the imminent invasion of England by William of Normandy. To William's soldiers waiting eagerly to set sail from Normandy, it seemed that the star's tail pointed directly at the Saxon king's castle in England. This was a divine guarantee of victory. It inspired the Normans rallying cry, Nova Stella, Nova Rex, a new star, a new king. Oh. By the time the star passed, the Saxon's king Harold lay dead, killed at the Battle of Hastings, and William the Conqueror became king of England. That long-tailed um, star is depicted on the Bayou Tapestry, and we know it today as Halley's Comet. Oh. Okay, superstition. Wow, that was fun. Oh, that was really fun. <coughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Age of Empires 4 is really amazing, man, with this all these cool history lessons and everything. It is really nice. Okay. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the first mission of the first campaign of our Age of Empires fourth playthrough and the next time when we come back we shall be proceeding with the second mission that is 1069 york but until then uh, you know what uh, let's not let's not leave it like that okay what was you going to say i i forgot i was in too much of uh, an excitement okay anyways uh, before I blunder further, anyways, that's all for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, then leave a like. If you did not like the video, then leave a dislike. Share, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos when they are released. Until the next video, this is Shinobi Ranger signing out. Bye.